Okay, so in this video we're going to in this video we're going to start with setting up the development environment. There are several ways of setting up your development environment. Uh, you if you scroll down at the bottom on the developer.wordpress.org slash block editor slash handbook, then you can see that you can either use the WP ENV package, which is this one, or you could also use your own setup environment like local by flywheel, VAM server, MAMP, or remote server. So it's completely up to you what setup environment you would like to use. However, for demonstration purposes, we are going to use the WP ENV package. So if you take a look, this is the package at wordpress.env, okay, which basically lets you set up the local environment for building and testing plugins and themes. It's simple uh, to install and requires no configuration. So uh, that's that's pretty good. So let's continue with that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say npmg install at WordPress slash env. So I'm going to head over to my terminal and I'm going to paste this command npm hyphen g install at WordPress slash env and let it install it. So this is going to install the WordPress environment package globally. The hyphen g is for global okay so that's been installed now we can check what version of the wp env we are going to use so let's see that's 4.1.0 so that's great and what this does is basically this tool this wp hyphen env tool it uses docker to create virtual machine that runs the wordpress site all right uh, if you haven't got docker um, you do need to install docker and there is a link available uh, on this url uh, for windows other versions of windows mac os and linux so you can click uh, any one of these depending on what environment you're on and you can install docker i have already done that so i don't need to install it but you need to install the let's say if you were on mac then you need to install the docker desktop okay these things are optional. If you want to continue with your own setup environment, you can do that like MAM, ZAMP, or local by flywheel, but let's continue with this, okay? So, uh, the next thing we're gonna do is, we'll say npx WordPress create block starter block, okay? So, I'm inside my root directory and I'm going to hit this. npx at WordPress create block starter block. So what this is doing is that it's creating a WordPress block in starter block. So, and then it's also creating a block JSON file, which I will explain in a moment. It's creating a package.json file, installing npm dependencies, etc. I'll just take a few minutes. And now it is installing the WordPress scripts package. So while it's installing that, let me just explain to you what that is. So WordPress scripts package, if you take a look at this one, it's basically a collection of reusable script tailored for WordPress development, okay? So when you are actually developing your Gutenberg blocks, you would need certain packages, certain tools uh, to set up before you can actually start developing. So for example, you need to set up Webpack, you need to set up Babel. So you use Webpack to bundle your modules, you use Babel so that it can convert the modern JavaScript into JavaScript that most browsers can understand. Um, so all of those things, instead of doing it yourself, you can just use this WordPress script package and it goes ahead and sets that up for you. So it kind of gives you a boilerplate. Uh, and another benefit is that rather than having to update those packages and dependencies on Webpack, Babel and your entire setup, every now and then you can just use this tool and update one tool and it's going to automatically take care of all of the dependencies it needs to update so as you can see that the idea boils down to moving all necessary configuration and scripts to one single tool dependencies and then updating all projects should be very straightforward task so that's why we're using the at wordpress scripts and if you weren't using the WP ENV package, then you would have probably used the WordPress scripts for your Gutenberg setup. However, since you're using the WP ENV, it's already doing that for you. Okay. So 
you can see that it's already installed it, formatting JavaScript files, compiling block, and it's also created a starter block for yourself, bootstrapped in starter block directory. Inside of the directory, you can do several commands. So uh, we are going to go through each one of these. I'm going to hit command T on my terminal to open another one. And let's go on to starter block folder cd starter block and now we are inside of that let's see what's inside of this so we have block.json node module package.json source build readme and starter block.php so what i'm going to do is i'm going to open up this directory inside of code editor you can choose any code editor that you like for this tutorial i'm going to use php storm so let's do that okay so i have opened this directory and as you can see this has actually created a plugin called starter block right and it has gone ahead and written all of this code for you to initiate this starter block and we are going to come back to that uh, in a moment uh, what we also want to do is you can see that in order for us to start the wordpress environment you just need to run wp env start okay so i'm going to do that so you can see it says it starts the build for development this is for production, this is for formatting, this is for linting. Imagine you had to set up all of this yourself, linting tools, JavaScript linting, but this is doing everything for you, all right? So it says that in order for you to start working on it, you can go to startup block and do npm start. Okay, so before that, we're going to run this so that we can uh, get our local WordPress development server running. So I'm going to head over to my startup block and do npm wp hyphen env start and it's updating the docker images okay so as you can see that it started the wordpress development server at localhost 8888 8, and there's also a test site site started at this url which you can check out mysql is running on port 54416 okay so let's open this up there you go, you can see that you've got startup block, just another website, see WP admin. Okay, and then we're gonna log in. We'll say admin and the password is password. And there you go, you're inside of the website, which is great, which is perfect, okay? So, just go back and take a look at this directory uh, and see what is available to us. So, if you see, we've got source directory, we've got, um, index.js this is where the block is registered it's imported from wordpress blocks then we have our styles that's this style is imported from the style.css this is where we put our styles and then you have the register block type function you've got edit function uh, which is going to use the edit component which is this one it is importing the double underscore function from wordpress internationalization package uh, use block props and then it's using the use block props over here the starter block all of that stuff going on here you have the save block which again using which again is using use block props so i'll explain all of that in a moment uh, but just give you a rough idea of what's going on over here there is our block.json it has got the name of the uh, block title category icon example all of that stuff going on over here is your package.json it has got all the scripts that are available for building for formatting for linting and this is the one we are going to use for the development purposes so let's try that one so i'm going to say npm start so you can see that it says start so npm start this is going to run the wp script starts which is this one and it's going to start the webpack development server which is basically bundling our files so it's picking up from the index.js and uh, it's outputting it to the the build folder which is index.js here okay and then you've got assets.php which contains your dependencies index.css and stuff like that all right then there is a register block type function that's being used and it's using the directory path over here and it's using the metadata loaded from the block.json file. 
uh, behind the scene it's also registering the assets so they can be in queue and queued through block editor in corresponding context now let's try to understand what's happening with this block.json and why this file is actually required so if you take a look at this URL developer.wordpress.org slash block editor slash reference guide slash block API slash block metadata. If we take a look at this, it says that starting WordPress 5.8 release, we encourage using the block.json metadata file as a canonical way to register the block types. So I'm going to explain what this does, but essentially what, what would happen is that when you use the register block type function and you provide it with the directory name of uh, the root directory basically where the block.json resides then it's going to automatically pick up these configuration from here and this is going to be API version this will be the name of the block with the namespace and the name of the block here uh, and then version number, the title of the block, category widgets, uh, which category that block will be registered in, which icon will it display, what will be the description of the block, whether it supports HTML or not, whether you can add HTML in that block, and then text domain, uh, and this also takes this takes care of the script editor script. So you need to provide it. You need to provide the part of your uh, JavaScript which will be included in the editor for that block and as you can see we'll say file colon and then root with dot for the root and then build build is this one and then index.js so it's going to take the root in with reference to this block.json and this will be editor specific style so these two will only be included in the editor this will be your front end styles so this will be part to the front end styles which is this one all right. When it comes to translation, it automatically handles that handles that on the PHP side. So when you provide this text domain, it's going to automatically translate this description, uh, this title, etc. Now, now what's the benefit of using this metadata file? So as you can see, it says that the block definition allows code sharing between JavaScript, PHP, and other languages when processing block type stores stored as JSON. So the first benefit is the code sharing. Second is the performance, right? When theme support lazy load assets block registered with the block dot JSON will have their asset enqueuing optimized out of the box. And the styles and script, it says styles and script would only be enqueued when the block is present on the page. And that's pretty useful because you, you may not want to include the styles and script for all of the blocks on all the pages. So this will limit its inclusion to that particular block itself, right? Furthermore, block type REST API endpoint can only list blocks registered on the server. Registering block server side is recommended using block.json. So there's an endpoint available called uh, block type REST API endpoint. And in case if you want to make utilization of this particular endpoint with slash block types, this is only going to work if your block is registered server side, right? Then last but not least, the WordPress plugin directory can detect block.json file, highlights the blocks included in the plugin and extracts their metadata. It does it out of the box. And it is also one of the requirements if you want to submit your block to the block directory, right? So all the block contained within the plugin must have the block.json file in order for it to be recognized, in order for it to be accepted in the block directory. All right, so let's take a look at this one. So register block type. So we are talking about registering the block on the server side, and you can see that this function basically registers the block on the server side, uh, and it will, this custom function calls this function, and it's hooked to the int hook. Uh, what parameters does, does it accept? The first parameter is the path up until the root of your block.json. So you can see part of the folder where the block.json file is located or full part of the metadata file name if named differently. So because our file is in the root directory, that's why I'm using dir, which means the you know path up until this, this directory, this plugin directory. If the name of the file was different, 
let's say instead of calling it block.json you call it something else let's say notice then you would need to provide that name here in case of the file is uh, named differently then it says that part of the meta you need to provide the full path to the metadata file if named differently okay then it takes certain arguments which is again optional it is empty i'm not going to overwhelm you with a lot of information here so i'm going to ignore that for now so when you register the block server side using register block type function which makes use of the block.json file the benefit you get is that when you register it client side you don't really need to pass those configurations right uh, it's just automatically going to pick that up all you have to do is just pass the name of the block the same name as you had put inside of the block.json so here it is right and then it's going to automatically pick up all of these configuration you don't have to define these configurations yourself that's the advantage however uh, although it is recommended so you can see that um, although the block on the server with php is still recommended for the reasons above if you want to register it on the client side and if you are not registering on the server side you only need it for the client side then what you could do is you could import this block.json file uh, let me show you how here it is import metadata from block.json file so wherever that exists and then you can go ahead and uh, put that information in the metadata so the first parameter you're going to pass would be your metadata so you can see that it says block name on metadata so in our case our, in this case for example when it's not registered server side we only need it for client side then in that case there are several other options available uh, that you can pass to the block.json but, but again i'm not going to overwhelm you with all of that information you can check them out here there are attributes available you can pass context variant etc uh, custom block style specific to that block so all of those information are available for you to read so now if you take a look at that block we'll see that search for starter block this is your starter block publish it and go to the front end you can see that starter block is here all right right so i hope it helps you understand that if you're going to define the path to your css your js your style then it's going to automatically pick up that and include that however there's another way to do this if you use wp register script and you give a name to the handle of that particular script then you provide the um asset file information which is index.assets.php uh, which is this one and if you take a look at the shape of that basically has dependencies which generally you have to put manually but you can see that it's already been added by wordpress and the version number as well you can use that over here you can pull that from that asset file you can use that while registering the script dependency and version etc so you don't have to do it manually when using the wp scripts package it does it for you now when you do it this way then what you could do is you could just copy this information and then you can pass that over here like so right you just have you can pass the handles let me show that to you here you go so in case if you have included the style that way you can just pass the handle all right and it's going to take care of that all right, so I hope that makes it clear to you and I hope you did enjoy the video and if you did, please uh, like my video and subscribe to my channel and I'm going to see you in the next video. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.